Love it or hate it, editing is a crucial part of any video project. We can film the most beautiful images, but if we don't edit them together to tell a story, then they end up just being a slideshow of pretty pictures. Today we're going to cover 10 tips to help you edit your next project. Welcome to Smartphone Storytellers, where it's my mission to give you the knowledge and skills that you need to create visual stories using your smartphone. Each week I share everything from theory to the techniques needed to create compelling videos that share what's happening at your organization. So make sure that you drop a like and hit subscribe to stay connected. JNL cuts are your friend. What's that you ask? Let me show you. When you're editing footage on top of a clip of someone speaking, you want to make sure your edits don't fall on top of each other. JNL cuts describe the pattern that cuts make when you line them up. If you have a cut in your spoken word footage, you want the edit to your B-roll to fall either before or after that cut, making a J or L pattern. This helps you to smooth out edits and hide when you make a cut to your spoken word clips. You don't want your video to be wall-to-wall -wall dialogue. You want to make sure that there are breaks in your script to allow your viewer to process the information that you're sharing with them. That's why it's important to let your script breathe. Make sure you don't edit out every space in the script and use topic changes as opportunities to add in a bit of a break. Your music and b-roll footage will help to keep people interested as they process what they've heard so far. I know the normal saying is show, don't tell, but often we still need to tell in our scripts. So anytime it's possible, make sure you show the things that you talk about. If your script talks about how your organization screen prints shirts, show b-roll footage of the screen printing process. Use the b-roll as a visual to illustrate the things that you're talking about. In addition to this, sometimes less is more. You don't always need to describe the footage that you're talking about. You can instead use the music and the footage to tell your story. When you're editing together your b-roll, tell many stories. Anytime I capture b-roll, I try to think of how I can capture clips that will tell a story. I'll get a wide shot to set the stage, then a medium shot to get a little bit closer to the action, and then I'll end it off with a tight shot to really capture the details. I don't just get a single one of each of these shots, but I try to make sure I have at least one of each. Then when I'm in the edit, I cut these together to tell a story. The wide shot gives the viewer an idea of the location. Then a medium shot helps to see the people involved. Finally, the tight shot shows the details of the action taking place. I then follow this flow as needed to tell the overall story of the edit. It's not a perfect formula. Often I'm gonna jump around, but anytime it fits, I edit together many stories. When you have someone on camera delivering a script, unless you're filming the first video involving Martians, you're most likely working with a human. And if that human is anything like me, they're gonna make mistakes. B-roll gives you the opportunity to not only show what you're talking about, but also to edit out any hiccups that weaken your final video. There is a style of video that doesn't use B-roll to cover up mistakes, but instead uses an effect called a jump cut. I use that method of editing frequently in my YouTube videos, instead covering up the cuts by punching into the shot. But if you want an edit that is smooth and flows together, then you're gonna to wanna to use B-roll to cover up your cuts. Speaking of covering up mistakes, it'd be a mistake to not hit like and subscribe so you're connected to getting the best tips and tricks for telling stories using your smartphone. I realize that was a terrible segue, but hey, it's not easy doing this each week. When you're cutting together B-roll footage, you wanna make it flow together as seamlessly as possible. One way to do this is to match action. This means that you track the actions in one shot and make the next shot a continuation of those actions. For instance, let's say you have a shot of someone loading food into a box. Your next tight shot would be the same motion of them loading that food in the box with their arms starting somewhere near the same spot. It's not always gonna match up perfectly but this helps make the B-roll scenes flow together similarly to a narrative video, and it helps the viewer to keep track of the orientation of everything in the frame. Sometimes when we make cuts in our footage, it's because the shot's outlived its usefulness and it's time to move on. Often though, we wanna use the beat and the momentum of the music to dictate our cuts. This helps you to use the energy of the music that already exists to create a natural flow to the scenes. On a faster song, you wanna cut every beat or every other beat when it makes sense. This lets the B-roll keep up the energy level that the music holds. Then, maybe during a particularly dynamic moment, maybe you want to cut on every beat if you've been going slower. Similarly, if you use this method on a slower song, then the visuals will match the mood and the feeling of the music bed. That doesn't mean you need to follow this formula for every cut. It's just a good ground rule to work from. Feedback can be the hardest thing to receive, especially when it comes to any creative project that we're invested in. We pour our blood and sweat into telling stories, and we naturally become quite attached to the work that we create. 
This is both a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing because it means that we're gonna give the deep level of care that the stories require, but it's a curse because sometimes it means we end up so close to the story that we miss making some of the editing calls that we need to make. One way to get around this is to ask for feedback. You wanna seek out the feedback of someone who isn't as close to the story as you are. This way you can see what's connecting, what's distracting, and what areas you need to tweak. This isn't the only way to overcome editing trials though. You gotta know when to hold them, know when to fold them, and know when to walk away. When you're working on an edit, it can be easy to get caught up in the story, in the footage, the music, and the countless other options that you've got for editing that it becomes difficult to figure out how to make it all come together. When I hit a wall with my edits, I find that literally walking away from the edit helps me to clear my mind. And in true Kenny Rogers fashion, I find that if I go for a run, I overcome my biggest editing roadblocks. I'm not gonna go for a run right now though. Helps me to focus on something else and get some physical distance from the edit and mental distance. I can't count the number of times that I've walked away from a problem that I've spent hours trying to overcome only to stumble upon the perfect solution when I wasn't thinking about it and just had my mind on other things. Finally, one of the best things you can do in an edit is make selects. What is a select? It's a timeline of all of your best footage and it helps you to stay organized after a shoot and quickly pull the footage that you need. I'm gonna dig deeper into the importance of making selects in my next video, exploring both the theory behind it, as well as the technique that I use to make sure I always have the best shots to quickly pull from, so stay tuned. These 10 tips will help you to take your edits to the next level and tell stories that connect. Make sure you come back to hear about why it'd be a huge mistake to not make selects of your footage. Now, I know it's time to walk away from this edit, but it's similarly important that you also gotta know when to hit like and subscribe because that means that you're gonna have more helpful smartphone related production tips delivered right to your YouTube for you page. And that's nothing you should run away from. I feel like this joke is getting out of hand, so I'm gonna fold. But remember, it's not the gear that matters, it's the story.